Okay, you guys, so let's talk about types of wigs. This is chapter three. We are really get in, getting into the makeup of what's in this box and what all of these individual little pieces are. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the wigs because uh, while you get 50 wigs with your kit, if you go through 50 candles, then you're going to have to get some more. So we're going to talk about these particular types of wigs. If you like these, um, how you can get some more like it. And we're also going to talk about some alternatives because there are a lot of options. So let's get into it. Um, historically, wigs are made of like a reed or a paper, but now they are more commonly made from like a braided cotton or often you'll see like a flat, thin wood wick as well, which is kind of a bit more common when you see like a rustic type candle. The wigs that come in your Chandler toolkit are cotton core wigs. They're popular for votives, pillars, um, large containers, even these like small little like mason jar candles. It's just a great all around general wick. Um, it's less rigid than paper or zinc. It burns the hottest in comparison to paper and zinc. So even um, a, it gives you like a larger melting pool. And it's recommended that you use soy with these particular types of wicks. And you can see, I don't know if you can kind of see down in there, but they are braided. You can kind of see that little braided cotton in there and they are covered with a sort of wax coating. They are attached to the metal, um, stand there. This is the part that we are going to adhere to the can, uh, candle container and it's got like a little bit of a standoff you see there. You, we mentioned earlier you don't want your candle to burn all the way to the glass. That's why you've got like an eighth of an inch um, little space there of metal so that your candle is not going to burn past that point. So great little uh, stand here to add into your candle. Okay, some other wick options would be flat wicks. Flat wicks are the most common type. They are made of small threads that are braided or knitted into a bundle. These wicks are self-trimming and will curl after burning. These types of wicks are usually best for pillars, tapers, and other freestanding candles. Okay, and then we have square wicks. Square wicks have square tips with rounded corners. They are good for using in beeswax, but they can also be used in tapers and pillars. So when burning, the wick bends slightly at the tip. Cord wicks. Cord wicks feature a core material inside of the braided knitted thread. The core is usually made of zinc, cotton, or paper and helps the wick stand upright. They are recommended for use in containers, votives, and pillars due to the rigidity of the wick. Specialty wicks. These wicks are usually used for unique candles and do not fall into any of the other categories. Uh, you may see them in like oil lamps or insect repellent candles or stuff like that. Different types of wick cores. So you've got like a zinc core wick, which is popular for a container or votive. Then you've, it, you know, it kind of burns a little cooler. It has maximum rigidity. And the wax recommendation for like a zinc core wick would be a paraffin or a gel. You want to avoid natural waxes when you're using a zinc core. Paper wicks. These are popular for votives, pillars, or large containers. Um, they're more rigid than these cotton cores, uh, but they're less rigid than zinc. Burns hotter than zinc, so the melting pool or hole in the candle is going to be bigger. And the wax recommendation is paraffin soy and beeswax. You want to avoid gel waxes with these paper wicks. Wood core wicks. Uh, these are really popular for containers. I would avoid using these in pillars or votives. These are a great alternative to candle wicks. Um, and I would avoid excessive fragrance or oils. They're available in one or two ply, hard and soft wood. The softer wood tends to produce like a crackly sound, which may or may not be appealing. And the wax recommendation for like a wood core wicks is a paraffin gel or soy. Okay, you guys, so we've gone over all of our wick options. Now it is time to move on to talking about fragrances and dyes. I've got some options here um, that I have been experimenting with. So we're going to talk about 
the ones here and then we're going to talk about some things you want to look out for when you're adding scent and dye. This is where the sort of sciencey stuff comes in. So we're going to really dive into that in chapter four. So meet me over there and we will get into this.